selection of the two teams in this bronze medal contest. On your right side, representing Korea, Bong il It's Korea against Hungary. And the last time they met in this hall, it was a 45-44 win in the gold medal match for Korea. And both of them have lost in their semifinals. But you know, and especially after the 15-14 loss by Aaron Salagi to O oh Sanguk last night, that uh, the Hungarians are going to be looking for revenge. They want redemption, certainly from the World Championship two years ago. And David, here, here we are. Um, as we reach the conclusion of this wonderful weekend of Olympic qualifying at this World Cup in Budapest. And we now know who's going to be going to Tokyo. The teams that will be going will be Korea and Hungary, the two we'll be seeing right now, in addition to Italy and Germany, Russia, Iran, the United States, and Egypt. And the individuals going will be Apati of France, Bazadze of Georgia, Frijani of Tunisia, Gordon of Canada, Zhu of China, and Yoshida of Japan. It's a great lineup. Okay, for tonight, for this match, Chanad Gemesi, Andra Satmari, Aaron Silagi, Thomas Dechi in reserve. For Korea, Gu Bangil, Oh Sanguk, Kim Jun Ho, and Kim Jung Won in reserve. It will be Salagi to open and close for Hungary. Kim Jun Ho to open for Korea. Oh San Guk to close. I'm expecting this. I'm expecting fireworks here for some reason. This is going to be a good one. Salagi faces Kim in our opening leg. Repose from Kim. Salagi came out of the gate hot. Looking for to attack, and Kim found the repost. This is the other way around. Salagi was waiting in second intention. He was trying to draw Kim's attack out, which he did, and then was waiting for a para repost, which he got. Steps out of distance. Wow, that's a beauty by Kim on a para repost. Let's see this replay. As Silagi steps in, he just flies in the air, catches the blade. He went down and missed and came up and got it. Great. Now, Silagi has this action where he goes, he steps to the side to try to make the fencer miss him. Watch him step to the side laterally. But he can't connect. No, nope, Kim wanted no part of that and scored. Are you looking at your two-time defending Olympic gold medalist looking for a three-peat in J Tokyo this summer? Attack and preparation by Silagi. The referee gives it to him. No complaint from Kim. Well, Tried I, to take the blade. I, I think he's got a score to settle first. <laughs> he does. Building a huge attack and caught on the back line, Kim, with a great parry. What a nice repost. Kim very strong on the blade here. And here we watch it. Parry, repost, boom. Parry and repost as he was going to the end of the piste. And the frustration on the face of Aaron Silagi, very clear to see. And a bit demoralizing to go with your best action at the end there and just get really get hit cleanly. Salagi attack and preparation. Kim acknowledges. Attack and preparation by Silagi, two in a row. 
And just like that, all those nice power posts, we don't remember them anymore because the score is four to four. Well, he got that pair of repose there, and what looked like was going to be a painful start for Hungary is redeemed. Five for Hungary, four for Korea. We go to the second, Chana Jemesi on for Hungary to face Oh Sang Gook. You know what we're seeing here in the men's bronze medal match, David? The same as we saw in the women's bronze medal match. Nice, clean actions. Exciting fencing. Well, it's always a delight to watch the Korean team. I mean, the, the, just the, their style, their acrobatics. Attack from Jemisee. Let's watch. Oh, went for the blade that's sort of sweeping low line parry, the Sakon parry, but missed. Attack and preparation from the right. Oh, well, that was nice. Nice attack right back at yeah. you. Yeah. Excellent use of distance. Try it again. O took one step back and was waiting for the parry. We watch him take one step back, half a step back, and a parry repost. Whoops. That was great. That was a nice one. Jemisee popped him on the hand. Boop. On the wrist or the forearm. Once O pulled distance there, Jemisee was a dead duck. He tried the flying lunge, the flunge, parried, and look out, because here comes the repost. And he lost control of his weapon. Yep. He could have been holding two weapons there. He would have been hit on the repost. No. <laughs> An attack from the left. Yep, there was a small window for O to make his new attack. He sort of hesitated and pumped, and Jemisee, who started, then continued. Wasted no time. Got the attack. Now, what, what was this? It was attack from the left. I think this is being challenged by... Yeah. By, oh, because Jemisee had a line, point in line, and then made a new attack, so he lost the line. The question is whether, when, what O did and when he did it. Nice. As well, we Touch. Don't, we don't get a replay. Nope. But it is for Jemisee and five for him. Three. Here's a replay. Here we go. Point in line. He lost the point in line, but what happened is O on the right made that sort of double circle, so he really yeah. didn't have the right of way. Um, that, was, that was a good outing there for Jamesi. And Andra Satmari will come on now for Hungary to face Gubon Gil. from the right.
attack from the right. Shakmarty just made a counter attack. <coughs> Repost from the right. Yeah, Andre Shakmarty needs to. Needs to get some focus here. All right, so he got a nice one there. Stop the bleeding for a second. Cause Attack from the right. Gu is a little quicker off the mark here. He scored four touches to one so far. Attack from Shotmari, but he paid the price because Gu's counterattack hit him right on the hand. You can see him flexing it there. Parry oh. post from the right. No, he acknowledged it. He acknowledged it. Initially said it was parry. Attack from the left. Oh Beat attack from the left. Parry post attempt from the right. Goo claims he claims it as his. Watch Shotmari take the blade right there. Goo takes it back. It's two beats. The second one should go to the fencer on the right. I believe there is a video review going on. There is. Marius Flora. Yep. That's the way I saw it. Yep. Attack and preparation from the right. You could just see with the with the plain eye, you don't need a replay, you could just see goo just a little quicker. Repose from Shotmari. Well, the the favor is returned. Yeah, he wasn't backing up fast enough. No, I think he went for the parry. Let's see if he caught it and just didn't hit. He did. No, he didn't. It was a malpare. Goo points to the coach, said, yep, that's the, one, that's the move you taught me last week. Satmari, in the end, keeps control. And Gu did not retreat uh, far enough back to parry that. So five there for Andre Satmari, seven for Gu Bongil, but still it is Hungary in the lead. Tenor Jamesi is back on. He'll face Kim Jun Ho. In the fourth, and our target here is 20. And Jemisey had an excellent leg against, oh, five to three oh, leg. Yeah. Oh, Let's yeah. see if he can keep it going. Simultaneous, no touch. Uh, Jemisey. Went looking for the blade, and... Kim found his target. Yeah. This is going to be simultaneous. question is who took the blade. For me, it looked like it was Kim on the right, even though he was going backwards. It looked like he took the blade. And that's what the referee calls. Watch who takes the blade here. So, on that sweeping action from the right, that's what, where the blade was taken, and that's why the call was made for Kim. Ooh. Well. A little step back from Kim. 
And it left Messi in no man's land. Ray fell short. He's dead duck. And his goose was cooked. <laughs> I think you may have a case of the bird flu. <laughs> that was foul. Oh. How does the referee call it? He calls it for Jemisey. Let's watch and see why. Yes, you could see Kim just do one little pump at yeah. the end there, and he, any chance he had for a simultaneous was out the window. But he's asking for a replay, and if the referee sees the replay the way I did, he'll keep the call the same. Referee Florea, who will be going to his fifth Olympic Games in Tokyo as a referee, keeps the call the same. Attack from the right. Jemisey was initially short. And once he's short, Kim now has the right of way. Watch him as he initially falls short. And that gives Kim the right of way to start his new action. Power repose from Jemisey was second intention, which means he's trying to draw Kim's attack out. And watch out, Kim. Makes a thrust, which is parried in a riposte. Yeah, this, <clears throat> this fourth leg isn't going as well for Messi as he did against. Nope. Against Osanguk. Uh, three there for Messi. Six for Kim Jun Ho. And 2018, Korea takes the lead. We and go to the fifth, and it's Aaron Silagi back on for Korea to face Gubon Gil. We've had a little momentum switch here, David, yeah. because Korea has outscored Hungary 13 to 8 in the last two legs. That, that's a, a good way to... Make your life difficult if you let that happen. Yeah. But we see lots of ebbs and flows in these team matches. And we see some, one fencer get hot out of nowhere and can change everything. Wow, a nice straight attack by Gu. And it'll be a little deflating for the Hungarian team here if their two-time Olympic champion, Silagi. Gyi, uh, doesn't close the gap a little bit here in this leg. Well, if you're going to ebb, you might as well do it in three, four, and five. And, and let the flow happen in seven, eight, and nine. <laughs> yeah. Silagi, here he comes with an attack. Boom. Very nice. Parry Ooh. repose. That's his specialty. That's what he loves. That's the best part of his game. That was pretty. Not that there's any not best part of his game. He's a two-time Olympic champion, but he, he's great with the repost. Yeah, Salagi's got the bit between its teeth now. And that's just one action that he does. I don't see other fencers really do it, where he sort of just moves to the right, puts his blade to the left, yeah. and he disappears and parries and hits the person. Oh, that was something special right there. Let's look at this. Parry, uh, repost. How about that? And, and some uh, uh, economy of effort. Yeah. Just a little turn of the wrist. He's in trouble here. And he paid the price for retreating too easily. Easier said than done. You don't want to cede ground, but when you're up against fencers that can move as well as the Koreans, you have no choice. Beat attack. Oh. 
Guvu initially was short, and Silagi made the attack. So that's twice. Watch. Goo pushing, pushing, seeing the opening and scoring to the, to the middle, to the chest. Even as Salagi is moving to the right with that body evasion of his. That's, that's his move. Silagi got it because it looked like Goo went for the blade, maybe didn't get it. Let's see what the call is. Silagi. It's a remise that hit first. He was short. Let's see what the referee called. See, like he hit first, but he might not have the right of way on this because once his first action missed, that would, should give the opening the right of way to Goo. Well, it went Silagi's way at in the initial call, and Medat Al Bakri had a look at way. the video and says that's what it is. Attack and preparation. That was a demoralized goo walking off the strip there. Well, it was a brief hold of the lead for Korea. Silagi with a 7-3 leg there. That's, a, that's exactly what the Hungarian team was looking for. Well, they got it. 25-23, we roll into the sixth. Andres Satmari is back on to face O oh, Sanguk. And at 24 years old, Silagi, two time Olympic gold medalist. He's 31, which is, you know, it, 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 his a Korean teammate, Geza Emre won the world championships at 41. No kidding. And a silver medal in the Rio Olympics at 42. Impressive. So, you know, age and experience are not a bad thing in this sport. And plus the athletes of the current generation are in such much better condition and they do so much cross training. But, um, but oh. Attack from the right. As, yeah. as he develops, and if you look at where he is now, and where he likely will be, you know, in a few years' time, he will be. He will be the. He, he will be something very special in the sport for a long okay. time. And he already is. He is. Attack from the right. It almost looked like O's initial attack was short, and then he continued. But the refs called the attack. So, O oh, was lightning fast there, but the referee says that Shuck Marty made the attack, started the attack from the left. Let's take a look. It's pretty close. Yeah, call attack, from the, attack from the left. Yeah. Mari went for a beat attack, Prise de Fer, taking of the blade, and didn't score. Let's see wh why. You consider how quick O is. You, if, if you're going to go in for something like that, you better make sure you don't miss. Yeah, and he did miss. Point in line, point in line. 
And it's still, and ooh, it's point, in line. point in line. The rules are very clear. You can't change the target of it. Oh, look at that, that point in oh, line. Oh, lordy. I guess it landed. Yeah, in his, in his uh, bib. Wow. You can't change the target of the, of the point in line. It has to remain stagnant. If a fencer goes to take your blade, you're allowed to deceive it and go around it, disengage. Derobement is the word in French, which is what happened there. New weapon there for O. Well, he wasn't going to get very far with the one they had. Nope. Here's a nice parry repost from Satmari. There's a beat attack, or was it a remise from O? Whatever it was, it's one light, he gets a touch. Attack in preparation from O, you can see Satmari's arm was back. Was on a 6 3 run in this leg. Is it simultaneous or? Yes, it is. Oh, setting up an attack here. Yeah, and that's not good news for Andres Satmari, but. He pulls it out. How about that? Against the long, oh, who's so hard to hit because of his long distance. And in the, and he was able to score an incredibly nice, long attack. What a way to finish. He, he, it, it looked like things were going to go really downhill there. It did. But he pulled, pulled it back together. And so Hungary retains the lead. It's amazing because it, uh, O had that 6-3 lead in this leg. If he scores the next touch, it's a 7-3, a momentum changer. And just like that, Satmari gets two beautiful attacks. It's only a 5-6 leg. They continue to have the lead. All right, so Chimessi has been pulled, and uh, it is Thomas Decci on in reserve. And he is a real bruiser. His brother, Andres Decci, is the coach. coach. Nice attack, two quickies off the bench. And we've seen that today. Some fencers come in off the bench hot like this. Oh, wow. <laughs> Referee says simultaneous. And we move on to the next. Attack from the right. Wow, and the Deci Express explodes with a beat attack. And he has come off the bench on fire. Well, yeah, you know, he's the muscle man. Beauty. 
Now the key is to close it out for Deci. Nope. And what I meant to say yesterday when we were talking about Hungarian fencers was that I ha imagine in my mind that Thomas Deci has a big Harley Davidson. And he just comes in, does the business, opens up a four point lead. And that was exactly what Hungary needed. What a spark plug he was. <laughs> they probably wish they could keep him on. Sometimes when you have a sub coming off the bench like that, you say, how come he didn't start him if, if that's the way he could fence? Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a tactical thing. It's kind of yeah. like, you know, it's like what Sarah Balzer did or tried to do in, uh, in, in the women's. And, yeah. and sometimes, you know, that's what you need. All right, Andra Satmari will face Kim Jun Ho. Only two in that leg for Gubon Gill. His mask clip came off. Satmar's mask clip came off, so Kim stopped fencing. That mask clip's very important because if it falls off and you hit your opponent in the mask, the touch will not register. Exactly. It is simultaneous. Yeah. Ooh. He's off. He <laughs> Are you going for the replay? It looked like his foot was off before he scored off the end of the piece. Watch closely. Can't, yeah, see. You can't see. Can't see. But it looked to me like he was just still barely on. Maybe not. It was close. But it's in the books. But he shouldn't be spending so much time down there. Nope. Well, he made that work. He did. That was a modified Sulagi lateral move closeout there, where he moved to the right a little and he moved his weapon arm to the left. And basically, the, uh, that's where the blade landed from Kim. Satmari was wondering how he managed to completely miss that. I'll tell you how. He hit um, Kim underneath the electric part of the jacket. And when that happens, no light goes on. That's what happened there. That's why the cry of exasperation. Okay, a little, mo a little bit of a comeback here by Kim. Next couple touches will be crucial. We heard a blade contact. Is it beat attack from the right or is it parry repose from the left? It's beat attack from the right, according to the referee. And if there's one meeting of the blades and Kim attacked and Satmar tried to parry, the rules yeah. are clear. It goes to the fencer who initiated. Oh, that was good. On the remise, was parried, and then Satmar hit on the remise as Kim's repose missed. Here he comes. Beauty. Beat attack from Kim. Satmar is waiting with the parry, and let's watch it. Beat, attack, parried on the outside, and repost. That was a very, very nice action, because you're in trouble when you're on your end of the piece right there. Big disadvantage for you, that fencer. Attack and preparation from the left, and acknowledgement from Kim. Gentlemanly sport, you don't have to do that, but he did. And the referees appreciate that, as, as does your opponent. Well, Satmari held things together. Three for Kim Jun Ho, five for Andra Satmari, and 40 35. 
we go into the ninth and final leg. The ninth and final leg, which will have Aaron Silagi facing off for the second time in two days against Oh Sanguk. Okay, here we go. Oh has his game face on there. It certainly looks like it. Oh has to score 10 to win. Uh, Salagi has to score 5. It was the last World Championships that fencing had in 2019 in this building when the gold medal match in front of about 20,000 people shouting, screaming people. Mm -hmm. Saw Hungary face off against Korea. And it was a 45-44 loss in the final leg. for Silagi. In fact, the final action in that, in that match was very much like what we saw last night where he basically just missed. So as we go to the replay here, fencers do come back from these types of scores. Especially fencers like Oh San Gook. Yes. And I remember at the Beijing Olympics in 2008, Keith Smart was down uh, 40 to 35 to five-time world champion Stanislav Pozniakov, and Smart was able to come back and propel the American team into the finals where they took a silver medal. So it can be done. It can be done a lot easier if your opponent doesn't score any points. <laughs> Salagi really pushing here. Wow. Yeah. He was attacking with a purpose. Yeah, take that. Here he comes, beating. Fainting. And attacking. That was emphatic. It was. Can he do it again? Can he do it four more times? Or does... Attack from the left and counterattack from the right. Let's watch Xilagi starting. Attack, it's very close, but Xilagi's arm started slightly ahead of O's. O caught him on his preparation there. Xilagi went for a parry repost, sort of got caught flat-footed. I doubt that will happen on the next action. Not a good time to go flat-footed. See, like he did it exactly to O what O did to him. Attack and preparation. Look at that. O tried for the blade. Two touches away. Remise oh, of the repose from O. Yeah, His first was one nice. was no, and then the remise hit. Salagi on, on the move. Whoa! Oh, Perry on the back line from O. Salagi says, Parry post, let's watch. Who takes the blade? That's a prise de fer from the right. Prise de fer means a taking of the blade. You see O make that sweeping move. And as long as he makes it on the top two-thirds of the blade of the saber, it's his attack. If it's on the lower third or at the guard, it's deemed to have been parried. And we're going to a replay, and maybe on the replay we'll see where it landed on the blade. But clearly, O was the provocateur there. He was the one taking the blade with the big sweeping action. Well, it seems pretty clear.
They're looking at this a really long time. It's strictly a function of where the blade, the beat landed. Okay. El Bakri says, no touch. Which means... That's kind of an odd call. Did they get a reset down at that end? Of yeah, that's a sort of weird one. But you know something? It's better to throw it out and give it to nobody than to get it wrong. And that maybe it was a 50-50. But for me, that was a beat attack from the right. <laughs> Quick as a cat with Silagi. He wasted no time. Look at that, that with lunge. Sp spring-loaded legs there. Had O gotten that previous call, it would have been 40-43. And certainly that's changed things a lot here. Oh, attack and preparation by Silagi. He had the timing, but he didn't get it. O says, don't worry about it. It happens to all of us. Okay, Aaron Silagi needs one point to win. O Sanguk needs four points to level. Well, revenge is mine, says Aaron Salagi. And that could have been yet another preview of the Olympic gold medal bat that we might be seeing in Tokyo. Yeah, Probably. 